It has been a deadly avalanche season so far here in Colorado. According to the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, four people have died in avalanches since December 26th. With more than 900 avalanches already reported this season, officials are cautioning people to be prepared. Denver 7's Amy Wattis went to an avalanche beacon training park in Minturn to find the best way to stay safe in the backcountry. 9.5, 9.1, 7.9. This may look like a real life situation, but it's just practice. Strike. This group of backcountry skiers are practicing life saving avalanche safety skills at the White River National Forest Meadow Mountain Beacon Park in Minturn, which is just outside of Vail. When you start your day, everyone turns their beacon on, and then everyone checks that their beacons are both sending and receiving appropriately. Nolan Hurd of Arvada led this search scenario, showing us how the training process works. These are actually turning on the buried um, transmitters. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. The park, which was developed in partnership with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, consists of eight buried transmitters that can be turned on and off from a small control panel. This allows for multiple search scenarios to familiarize people with using their avalanche beacons and probing for snow victims, which is what this group is doing here. Three, six, three, two. I even had the chance to jump in and give it a try. We have a positive strike. Now the real work begins. Once you get to your victim, the process isn't over. You still got to get them out, address any wounds. Trauma is a huge thing that kills people in these avalanches. It's not just the burial. It's having the medical skills to now stabilize your victim. Cassidy Grady has been backcountry skiing for seven years and says she still needs to practice her life saving skills, stressing it's all about improving your muscle memory. When you go out in the backcountry, most of the time you're not rescuing anyone. So to come out to one of the beacon parks is really to get that practice in that you um, that you know you need. But sometimes, no matter how much you practice, things can happen. While Alex Blanchard hasn't had to use his skills to help save someone trapped in an avalanche, he witnessed his friend get caught up in one. Thankfully, he got out okay. He was on top, but it was terrifying. You have the tools in this situation if things had gone worse. Amanda Wheelock with the U.S. Forest Service says the Beacon Training Park is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is just about our third season, but we've seen more and more folks coming out and, and using this resource. In addition to practicing avalanche safety skills at a Beacon Training Park, Wheelock says there are other ways people should prepare before heading into the backcountry. We recommend certainly that everyone take, you know, at minimum some sort of avalanche education course, especially with a field component. Get the right gear and get familiar with it by practicing in an area that isn't prone to avalanches. Surround yourself with people who know what they're doing and make sure you're checking the CAIC's avalanche forecast before you head out. We can take steps to be as prepared as possible, but there is always still a risk. A risk these backcountry skiers say is worth taking. It's a part of me to be out there and to be traveling like that and spending time in those places and I try to make the best decisions that I can. It's just a totally different experience. I'm just taking care to be as safe as possible. Amy Wattis, Denver 7. And Wheelock says the Colorado Avalanche Information Center is the first resource people should consult. You can find the latest avalanche conditions as well as education courses and we have a link to their site up on denver7.com.